On December 29th, 2001, I left my house with some friends around 6 p.m. We rode our bikes down the block to the woods around the lake to hang out for a bit. My friend had found an old fence pole on the ground and was crushing some of the ice on the lake with it when suddenly, I heard footsteps behind us. I had been stargazing about 20 feet away and got up to run to my friends, but when I got to the lake, we saw that it had frozen over again. We checked the time and it was 8.15. There was no way over two hours had went by. When I looked back up at the sky, the shooting star I had been watching had stopped moving entirely. I work in networking and all of our shifts are late. I usually get off around 2 a.m. and I'm up for a few more hours before I go to bed. This particular evening, it was raining heavily when I was on my way home. When I finally arrived, the clouds broke, and I stepped outside to have a quick smoke. One of my buddies called me, and we were chatting about work. The rain was still holding up, and I was looking around at the low-lying clouds. There are orange streetlights in my area, and I could see them reflecting off the bottom of the clouds. I was facing west, and when I turned to my right, I could see a black cube coming from the north and moving south, leading with a corner, going about 60 to 80 miles per hour. This thing was huge. It had to have been about 80 to 100 feet tall. I was astonished. I sat there speechless for a few seconds, knowing that I was seeing something amazing. I tried to make out the details. It had what looked like a rough stone surface, and on the side of the cube there was a circular symbol inside a border. It almost looked like a circular maze. The cube was disturbing the air behind it and created a vaporous trail. It was completely silent. I stumbled over my words as I tried to describe to my buddy what I was seeing. He lives a few miles south, so I asked him to go outside and check if he could see it. He went into the middle of his street and waited out there for about 15 minutes, even once it started to rain again, but still couldn't see the cube. I've been ridiculed and laughed at, but no one can ever tell me that I didn't see what I saw that night. I know what I saw. Before I tell my story, I'd like to say that I'm a complete skeptic, and I question everything and anything supernatural. I think extraordinary claims should always require extraordinary evidence. Even to this day, I will never be able to empirically prove what I experienced. I'm currently 26 years old. This happened on June 16th, 2007. I remember it vividly. It was immediately embedded into my long-term memory when it all happened. In psychology, I believe they refer to these events as flashbulb memories. I was living in my parents' home at the time. It was a stormy night, and the wind was gusting more than usual, and rain was coming down violently with crackles of thunder and lightning. I was playing World of Warcraft at the time, enjoying the idea that I had a legitimate excuse not to go out and do anything. I was about to finish up one of the longest chain quests in the game when the internet suddenly went out. I spent an anxious 30 minutes trying to get my connection back, but no success. I headed to my room, frustrated. There I was, home alone, no internet, and irritated as hell. My parents were at a work event that night. I remember lying on my bed, just staring at the ceiling. I turned my head to look at the alarm clock and saw that it read 6.18pm. Out of nowhere, a loud, heavy knock came from the front door. I sprung up eyes wide open. I crawled to my window and saw three tall men dressed in what I can only describe as typical FBI-looking black suits. One was holding what looked like a folder, and another had what I now know as a Geiger counter. The third man was beating at my door with his huge fist. I headed to the door, thinking that they were just people soliciting for a local church. I opened the door, and the man who had been knocking greeted me in a very monotone voice. He pulled out a badge and told me that he was there with his colleagues to check the water source from my house's faucets. 
I questioned them quite a bit, and they responded by telling me that they were, in fact, the FBI, and someone had allegedly tried to poison the city water. I called my parents to let them know what was going on. They okayed the situation, so I let the men in suits into the house. Soon after, a group of government guys showed up to check the water for them. I tried to ask them what was going on with the poisoning, if there was some kind of motive, but they simply told me that they couldn't give out any details. Out of nowhere, all the lights in the house went out. It was pitch black, and the guys in suits told everyone to stay calm, and that it was just a power outage. The guys taking water samples turned on their flashlights. As one of the flashlights passed over the tallest of the suited men, I noticed a reflection from his face, almost like there was metal under his skin. The man holding the flashlight quickly directed the light elsewhere. Soon after, he turned to the suited man and said, Sir, it has begun. The suited guy turned on the Geiger counter he was holding, and it started going haywire. About three seconds later, it felt as if I was being pulled into a million directions. I couldn't see anything at first, just suffering through excruciating pain. I felt like I was being disintegrated alive. Suddenly, all I could see was white. A man appeared to me and smiled, swinging his arms in an inviting gesture, as if I was entering a ballroom dance party. I tried to walk but couldn't move. Then, I watched as the white room was sucked into itself. In that moment, I watched my life flash before my eyes. Disneyland at age 5, my first kiss at age 15, watching 9-11 happen on TV with my parents, everything. I could see Earth suspended in space and watch from above before I started to fall. My heart was racing as I fell faster and faster, and I felt numb as I realized that this was how I was going to die. Right before hitting the ground, I heard the monotone voice of the suited man again. In my next moment of consciousness, I was waking up in my bed, in a cold sweat and total panic. I immediately ran downstairs and found my parents cooking dinner. I noticed that the time was 6.22 p.m. and was relieved to find out that it had all been a dream. That was, until I asked my parents when they had arrived back at home. They told me they had been home all day since it was their day off. I asked them about their company event, a bit confused, and they told me it had been last week. I asked them when I had fallen asleep, and they just told me they didn't realize I was sleeping. I headed back upstairs to my room and found that my World of Warcraft account was logged in and left at the point that I was before the internet went down, and saw that it was the 23rd. I had no memory of a full week. As I looked around my bedroom, I noticed that it looked like someone had went through my closet. I searched around and found the exact same Geiger counter the FBI agent had been holding, sitting there in my closet. I figured no one would believe me, so I haven't told anyone about this until now. I still have the Geiger counter, and I'm not sure what to do with it. I've spent the last decade trying to put the pieces of this experience together, living day by day and hoping they don't return. I saw a UFO up close, probably about 30 feet away, although looking back I'm pretty certain that it was some type of military design. I was out driving with my younger brother near a military base in Tucson, Arizona, not even two miles from my house. It was about 10pm or so and there were no cars on the road. I was making a left at an intersection, and as soon as I completed my turn I could hear something like a hovercraft motor approaching from behind us. It started off quiet, but got louder as the craft got closer. My brother leaned out of the window to see what was making the sound, and loudly exclaimed, Whoa, it's a fucking UFO! Of course, hearing this, I hit the brakes. I was shocked by what I saw, and it's convinced me that UFOs are real ever since. I came to a stop, and the craft glided above us. I watched as the wings detached like a transformer, and lowered themselves about 5 to 10 feet from the craft. The wings were supported by two rods that were connected to the craft, and there were two giant thrusters on each wing, and an even larger one at the bottom of the craft's main body. As the wings lowered, the craft's body flipped up over a two-story building that was just ahead to our left, barely missing the roof of my car with its wings. Then, it reconnected the wings, forming a triangular shape, 
and boosted back over our heads at an incredible speed. The whole craft was pitch black, and I don't think we would have noticed it if we hadn't had the radio off and heard it approaching us from behind. I've tried to rationalize what we saw that day, and my best explanation is that it's probably a military design. It looks like what I imagine a stealth bomber from the future might look like. This is the craziest UFO story I've ever heard, and it comes from my dad. It was the 1960s in Ethiopia, and my dad was just a child, nine years old at the time, playing with his best friend Gabriel after school. They were playing in the fenced backyard at my dad's house. He turned his back for a second, and when he turned back, his friend Gabriel was gone. My dad and Gabriel were part of the top 1% of Ethiopia's ruling elite. My dad's father was the Minister of Interior Ethiopia, and Gabriel's father was a four-star general of the country. The backyard was heavily guarded and surrounded by ten-foot brick walls. Both families searched for Gabriel but couldn't find him anywhere. After 48 hours of no sign of him, a nationwide search had begun. It was on the news and police were searching door-to-door, -door, telling people his physical description and what he was wearing when he disappeared. Helicopters even searched the countryside looking for him, but couldn't find anything. Once four months had passed, people started to lose hope that he would ever be found, and began to think the worst. Exactly six months to the day that he went missing, Gabriel suddenly reappeared in my dad's backyard. He was wearing the same private school uniform he had been wearing that day, and it was still clean. He looked exactly the same as he had six months prior. Once the police confirmed that he was okay, they began questioning him about where he had been. He told them that a couple of nice men took him on a trip. He was in a white room that glowed, and other children were there from different countries. He said he was surprised when he found that the nice men, who looked like white guys, could speak Ethiopian. He could even understand what the other children were saying, even though they were all speaking other languages. The white room Gabriel described had no windows, and the doors disappeared into the walls. He said there were buttons on the walls, and if someone pushed them, a bed would come out from the wall. After his stay in the white room, Gabriel told the authorities that he was suddenly transported to a city that was glowing, clean, and cars were flying all around him. He said the people there looked strange, like us, but different. One of the nice men was still with him and took him to a tall building, where he was told to stay for a while. The man showed him a room that he could use for entertainment. There was a button that could bring the room to places, like an open field or the beach. After a couple of hours, he was brought back to Ethiopia, and that's how he got back to my dad's backyard. He was under the impression that he had only been gone for a few hours total. No one believed his story, and since Ethiopia is a highly religious country, most of the adults around him thought he had been possessed. Gabriel was even forced to see a priest to get rid of any evil spirits that may be haunting him. My dad still keeps in contact with him. He went on to get a doctorate in physics and works a good job in Holland to this day. <laughs> 